after installing 40 grow beds, each having its own bell siphon, I was running into uh, difficulties with uh, some of the grow beds getting locked either in the fully flooded position or completely drained position. Uh, when I initially installed the bell siphons, they all functioned perfectly. After time, though, um, some, there must be some variables in there, and uh, the reliability wasn't such that I could leave it uh, the way it was. So I had to rethink uh, the whole engineering of the bell siphons. So one of the uh, critical parts of the bell siphon is the standpipe and I found that the standpipe with a nice funnel shaped uh, end seems to work the smoothest the most reliable so right now I'm turning a, um, a jig to press the funnel shape on the end of the PVC pipe uh, the area that I'm working on there with the uh, uh, tool is uh, going to be the neck that goes into the uh, PVC pipe. And I have it sized to a half inch. Um, I'm using this skew knife right now to uh, smooth the surface and to cause or create a small uh, scoop at the bottom of the siphon the funnel, uh, sort of like a uh, ski jump, uh, to disrupt the water flow as it's coming in. Uh, it seems to help a little more with uh, creating that uh, blocking effect that starts that uh, siphoning action. Uh, using that skew knife uh, saves from sanding. It'll give a real smooth finish. almost to the size that I want. The excess material needs to be cut off to make the jig uh, a workable size. Um, the piece of wood that I'm using is a piece of um, table leg, chair leg from one of my Windsor chairs. So I sacrificed a nice piece of cherry for this jig. The half inch PVC pipe um, is being heated up with a 1500 watt heat gun. Now you could use a torch, but I don't like having the flame. Uh, it burns the PVC too easily and it's hard to control the heat. Uh, you can notice uh, there's three marks on the end of the pipe. The reason I did that is all the pipes were cut at first with a tubing cutter, which is a, a knife. Uh, lever knife and it doesn't cut the end square so on each end I use the chop saw to square the ends up and that's the side that I'm flaring to make the funnel uh, after doing a few of these uh, I noticed or I learned that uh, you can't have the the gun so close to the workpiece. It heats too quick. Um, it's not softening it all the way through to the center. It's softening the outside first. And if it goes too quick, it also causes some burning on the outside and it doesn't allow the PVC to stretch quick enough when you push it on. Um, after doing a few of these, I'm doing six to start with. I got about 40 of them to do. Uh, I think I'll have the system down a little quicker. But even so, it turned out pretty well. 
Now you notice trying to stand this up on its end, it won't keep its balance because of the knife cut that was not squared. And that's why I used the chop saw. After I made the initial uh, stand pipe to the size that I wanted, I want to replicate every one that I do. So I'm marking the jig uh, at, at a, with a stop line. Now they're not critical, they don't have to be all exactly the same, but it'll get them pretty close. Here again I'm heating it too close and uh, you, know, you learn from, from doing, or at least learn from observing what you did and what wasn't working right. Uh, the next ones will be improved upon. After the ends are flared to the funnel shape, it's real quick to cool these down. If you take a wet rag or a damp rag and hold on there, this one's not wet enough, but uh, that would cool it down quick enough that it will hold its shape and not have a tendency to want to spring back. If you uh, expand this even too much, you can always heat that up and it'll shrink back to its or close to its original size. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, my friend. Bye bye.